Ahmed Kambaru liaison office in Indonesia has moved to a larger location. City volunteers in the Philippines distribute aid supplies to drivers affected by the pandemic. Welcome to Dai Headlines, I'm Siri Su, thank you for joining us. City Pankambaru Liaison Office in Indonesia has moved to a new place during the Lunar New Year. This new home was purchased with the love of local volunteers and members. Its space is three times larger than the original office. The new office marks a new milestone for city's work in Indonesia. A sonorous and powerful performance of the Sutra adaptation kicked off the relocation ceremony of Tsuji's Liaison Office in Pankambaru. Then all volunteers lined up and untied the red ribbon on the doorknob to symbolize the opening of Suzy's new days and office. When the volunteers pushed open the door of the liaison office at that moment, I was very touched. I felt like we were walking on the Bodhisattva path, just like what the Master said before, for the right thing, do it right away. Because of the pandemic, the opening ceremony was made simple. Through the cloud connections, volunteers share their joys with the Dharma families in other cities of Indonesia. And the CEO of the Indonesia chapter also gave the most sincere blessings. I'm very grateful to the brothers and sisters in Pekanbaru. I believe your selfless contribution has obtained Pekanbaru society's great affirmation. You must seize the chance to recruit more bodhisattvas and work hard on Siji's mission. In the new office, the space is three times larger than the original one. With this new home, the Bodhisattva and Redman will be more powerful. Today there are so many Tsuji brothers and sisters. Only with their dedication we can have this achievement today. So I'm especially happy today. Thank you all Dharma members for their support. And with the support from the public and neighbors, we can move to this new loving home. After the completion of the new loving home, more people's kind hearts can be gathered, and Suzy will continue to work hard for the next 14 years in Pengaburu. So the Indonesia chapter gathered Chinese people in Indonesia, along with entrepreneurs and volunteers, and prepared a million packages for families affected by the pandemic. They held a distribution at the end of February. Let's join them there. In the small home of Rimdani, PT bottles are laid out at the doorstep. He lives a rough life, yet the pandemic made it even rougher. My job is collecting PET bottles. Sometimes I make one U.S. dollar, but if I can collect two bags of bottles, I can make up to two U.S. dollars. Under the movement control order, he has been unable to go out to earn income. He even won star for three days. The 10 kilograms rice given by Tsuji has solved his short-term issues. I'm very happy to receive the supplies. I can cook meals now. Thank you, Tsuji, for your help. Helping impoverished families like this during the pandemic, on the day of the Lantern Festival, Tsuji volunteers invited entrepreneurs and Chinese people from raising rice and gift packages. These supplies are from everyone, and we hope to continue the distributions like today. With the assistance of military and police, then under proper COVID prevention measures, supplies are being distributed to communities in need. As we mentioned, this is the Indonesia chapter, distributed gift packages to one million households. The new COVID-19 vaccine is also part of the gift package. For the first three days, a total of a thousand people administered the vaccine at Dai village. Let's take a look. In addition to protecting the body, vaccinations also teach people a good lesson about medicine. People over 60 years old must first answer questions about blood pressure and health history. To determine who can be vaccinated, you must also listen to the precautions and understand the possible physical reactions. Vaccines are helpful to our health, so we can prevent being infected by COVID-19. We're very happy to be vaccinated for free. Beginning at the end of February, Zuji's Indonesia chapter started distributing packages which included vaccinations. The first three days of distribution was extended to the Da'ai village, elderly volunteers and medical staff. Although we have been vaccinated against COVID, no matter how long it takes, as long as the pandemic has not subsided, we still have to comply with the pandemic prevention measures. 
we still have to abide by the pandemic prevention regulations. Even if you have been vaccinated, wear a mask, wash your hands frequently, and maintain social distancing. The second dose of vaccine will be given 28 days later, and protection will begin to develop 7 to 14 days after the second dose. High-risk groups are given priority at the moment to give their children peace of mind. Tima members in central Taiwan go to remote regions, providing care to citizens who aren't able to leave their homes for treatment. Let's follow them into each household. Mr. Lai has been in bed for years due to muscular dystrophy, but under the long-term encouragement and care from volunteers, he is able to stand up again. The scene was especially moving to Tima members Dr. Tai. From the first time when I visited you, you were lying in bed. I remember back then I had to lift you up. Now you can stand up on your own. In Nanjuang's mountainous regions, many patients are unable to travel to free clinic locations. Therefore, Dr. Ji Bangjie and his team visited those people. The patients, besides receiving treatment for body pain, they've also received teachings from Master Zhen Yan. <laughs> City volunteers have the heart of great love when helping patients in need. This is really impressive. The footsteps of caring made its way to Zhuolan Township. Senior Xu Xingde sits on a wheelchair. With loneliness, he awaits for his children to come home. We comforted him well. There are a lot of Tsuchi brothers and sisters who often come here to look after him, treating him like a family member. Although there are no kinships among volunteers and patients, the care from Tima never stopped as more doctors and volunteers set out to bring utmost sincere care to patients living in remote regions. Recently, a spiritual lecture was held at Taidong Jing Si Hall. A doctor from Daling City Hospital was invited to share the secrets of knee protection. Let's join in there. Nu Zhao Rui, a famous joint doctor, went to Taidong to share joint protection and the concept of health. In fact, I want to remind everyone to adjust their habit of using knees at any time in daily life or during work. If one can pay more attention, the torn cartilage can heal by itself. Dr. Liu said that because of farming, one may need to bend or squat for a long time. The knee cartilage may be easily damaged. So more attention should be paid to the use of knees. I think my largest reward is to get in touch with the doctor and receive the best information as soon as possible. In the future, I'll be more cautious about protecting my knees. It is advised that people should pay more attention to daily maintenance, bend less, bend slowly, and do not bend for too long to maintain the health of knees. The Jingsu Books and Cafe in Xinyi District holds lectures every weekend. Recently, Shi Shenhui, who is a well-known financial writer in Taiwan, was invited to share his happy life after retirement. Let's learn more. Shi Shenghui, who is a well-known financial writer, has retired for 17 years. He was invited to share his happy life after the retirement. After retirement, you can't just have old friends. Why? Because old friends will pass someday. You have to keep making new friends, and I think the way of making new friends is one of the origins of a happy life. He used to have a successful life, while also experienced unemployment in his middle age. He shared different views on financial management based on his own experiences. This financial management concept is actually very broad, which includes how he lived a very energetic and plentiful life with his own experience. So I think it's worth listening to. In fact, what the teacher told us today is not to pursue the largest wealth nor the greatest achievement. Instead, we have to define success and wealth by our own standards. I think this is very important. The teacher said at the beginning that we don't need to make a lot of money, just enough is fine. He might be correct, the nature of human is greedy. Yet, how to make ourselves not so greedy? We need to find the balance in life. 
Shi Shenghui's financial management concept has made people think differently, and his feelings for his family are his eternal bond. There are no difficulties and challenges in my happy life. However, my concern for my family has always existed. It's impossible to be happy every minute and second. For example, my parents are already old. I always worry about them for my children's career. Although I can't help, I would still worry. The lecturers at Jingzi Books and Cafe every weekend allow the public to know more about the authors and to learn more good thoughts while reading. In 2020, it's the Philippine chapter distributed rice to public transport drivers to help them get through the pandemic. This year, city has started a second wave of a supply distribution so that more drivers and their families can get needed help. City volunteers carry out their second wave of pandemic relief for public transport drivers in Talayan and Galas in Quinzon City in 2021. I feel at ease today because this assistance has come in time. We are running out of rice to cook. In addition, you gave us some supplies. Really, we are very grateful to Tiji. John John, who suffers from polio, has been working to support his family for 20 years. However, due to the pandemic, he's facing financial difficulties. We cannot sustain our daily needs from driving motor tricycles anymore because there are few passengers. Sometimes there are no customers. Meanwhile, 62-year-old Hermo has been facing another difficulty in life. I'm a motor tricycle driver. However, since two weeks ago, I have not been able to drive my motor tricycle. It is because I cannot see with my left eye all of a sudden. I'm afraid it will be dangerous for me to drive. City team members will provide medical care to this driver who has suffered a vision problem. In Malaysia, since last March, city volunteers have been helping families affected by the pandemic. During the Lunar New Year, Sagar Patani city volunteers went to communities to deliver New Year wishes to families in need. During the Lunar New Year, we brought you a red envelope to deliver best wishes and auspiciousness. During the Lunar New Year, city volunteers continue their charity work. Sugai Patani city volunteers deliver New Year wishes to families in need. Our economy has been impacted during the movement restriction order period. With the pandemic relief plan, we deliver help to families in need and form good affinities. We hope to get them through the tough times. Due to COVID-19 pandemic, disadvantaged families are facing financial difficulties. City volunteers have come to a key recipient's house as the 81-year-old man still has to work to support himself. He is very old, but he still rides the bike to go pick paper. It is very dangerous. I feel that we should help him. Despite the pandemic, city volunteers continue to provide love and care to families facing financial difficulties. Calgary, Canada is under a state of constant ice and snow every winter from September to March. However, city volunteers are undeterred by the weather. They arrive at a local donation center every month to assist in organization of secondhand clothes. Although the temperature outside is 32 degrees Celsius below zero and colder than household freezers, city volunteers have arrived at the donation center early in the morning. <laughs> Making sure to be properly equipped with masks, gloves, and goggles, the volunteers are ready to start the day's work. So although the, the vast majority of clothing items we do get, we give away to the public for free, if it is a high-value item, we're going to try to sell it to generate some money for to keep these programs going. The drop-in donation center is devoted to providing emergency shelter for low-income residents and homeless people. In addition to relieving their temporary worries of being out on the streets, the center also assists them with looking for a new home. The drop-in donation center also collects recycled old clothes from the community, providing these clothes to help people who need them to keep warm. 
CCG volunteers regularly visit the center every month to assist with organization and sorting of items. Despite the weather being constantly cold and snowy, the volunteers remain unwavering, persisting in spreading love through doing good deeds. In Taiwan, the Ciji community offices held Lunar New Year celebrations. San Tsong Ciji volunteer Xu Xiuyan is a dance teacher. In addition to teaching community mothers to dance, her daughter, who's hard of hearing, can follow the beat and dance on stage. Let's take a look. Moving a big flag and doing bat flip or dancing popular street dance, Lin Pei San, who was born with disability and is hard of hearing, can do it easily. I would turn the speaker louder and knock on the door to feel the beat. I would keep touching the speaker and practicing the beat. By doing it repeatedly with perseverance, I could be able to improve gradually. Just like they have a hearing impairment, but through their hard work, they can still accomplish the things that ordinary people cannot do. Mother Xu Xiuyan is a dance teacher and a Suzy volunteer. In the Lunar New Year celebration, the program is arranged mindfully, and the mothers in the community follow the teacher to bring joy to everyone. At our age, we need to do some exercise. As I'm the teacher's student, I think it is good to follow her to participate in some activities. Lin Taihao specially brought his mother with mobility issues to participate. I brought my mother here to have a look and walk around to feel everyone's happiness. So the volunteers from Nangan Sing Yi also host a Lunar New Year celebration in the Eastern District. They strictly abide by the pandemic prevention guidelines and are grateful for everyone's cooperation so that the gathering can proceed smoothly. In Taiwan, a leukemia patient, 55-year-old Tsai ing -jen, has passed away last month. Her family has held a photo exhibition to honor her, selling 55 pictures for charity purpose. Teacher Tsai ing -jen, who's passionate about photography, has traveled domestically and internationally to take pictures. When my mother was alive, she wanted to hold a photo exhibition. We're holding a photo exhibition to honor her. This way, more people can get to know her works. Tsai's families and friends hold a photo exhibition and a memorial service to honor 50-year-old Tsai, who has passed away due to leukemia. We do our best to help her fulfill her wish. During the exhibition period, our staff members take turns to help out. It has been more than one year since Tai was diagnosed with leukemia, and when she passed away, Ziji Stem Cell Center has been looking for matching marrow donors for her. On the second day after we found a matching donor, it was too late as her lung had water. Therefore, we have a lot of regrets. Tai's family sells Tai's photographs and donates the proceeds for charity purpose. Tsuji has helped us look for matching donors. We want to help more leukemia patients, so we donate the funds to Tsuji. This way, they can benefit more patients. This is our intention. Life is impermanent. As she was so young, I feel for her. Ziji volunteers seized the opportunity to promote stem cell donations, hoping that more leukemia patients can get a second chance at life. At the Elan Plain, there's Xuesan and the Central Mountain Range, connecting water vapors from the north, west and south. The 200 days of rain in Yilan has made the area a rain village. Not only is rain abundant in Yilan, rivers and streams also pass through Elan Plain. Here's our report. Besides the abundant rain in Yilan, the county also has a rich water resource, like the Tangwei Go Hot Spring Park. Besides the hot spring attraction, moving southward there is the Suha Cold Spring Park. The streams range from freezing point to the boiling point. It is safe to say that the Yilan Plain is a water museum. Two hundred years ago, when Han people reclaimed the Yilan Plain, water-related businesses were in development, paving the success for the attractions now. The aqueduct here is one of it. 
The source comes from Jiaoxi River. The Jiaoxi River then converges with rivers in Ilan, that is the left bank. And over there, at the right bank, there will be spring water which was dug back in Qing Dynasty. During Qing Dynasty Jiaqing reign, 16 years of digging has led waters into different streams and into communities, benefiting citizens with a space in harmony with water. Washing the clothes near the ditch, the water here has a stable source, providing farms at the downstream with resources for irrigation. The entire irrigation area is about 600 hectares. At the upstream, endless water streams come down here, so there will never be a depletion of water as there will only be minor differences between high and low water periods. In Ilan, there is no water reservoir, yet the county really has water resource issues. The secret lies underground. Transparent clean water flows towards the single water resource ecological park. This place is the old ditch of Lanyang River. The water here comes from Xuesang Range, and it was pushed to this riverbed. Part of it comes from the old water course in Lanyang River, and through the groundwater vein, the water gathered here and formed a headwater point. So through the accumulation of water in at Ilan's alluvial fan landscape, a large underground vein formed creating multiple streams. With a depth of 2 to 3 meters, the Sengo Water Resource Ecological Park has plentiful water resources. The park also provides mutually beneficial effects to the ecosystem, becoming an important site for water resource education. Streams coming from the underground spawns bubbles. The scenery can be seen everywhere in the park. While there are only five wells in the park, it provides tap water to cities located north of Lanyang River. There is a saying, Yuan San's good water, which means Dong San's streams are sweet. So in places where it's close to the upstream and near the mountains, many people gather water here to make tea. Therefore, the entire Ilan County can be described as a city built on water. Around the Sengo Water Resources Ecological Park, there are farm belts which haven't been developed. In 2012, the park was recorded as a cultural landscape, as the view never changed for 90 years, preserving the pure water quality. There are two water sources. The first one comes from the park about 20,000 tons. The second stream comes from the Chukan River. Adding up, we have to release about 60,000 tons of water per day. Ilan's water is sweet due to its rainy weather, but there's another use for the abundant water resources. We save up the water collected over the winter season and will reuse it during the summer season. It is safe to say that the entire underground of the Ilan Plain is a giant reservoir providing water resources to counties whenever there is a need. In Australia, City Volunteers have held an online concert to raise funds for charity purpose. We'll leave you with these images. Thank you for joining us. Goodbye.